So today, I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective of where we've come from, and hopefully give you a very good glimpse of where we're headed. And I think it's important to understand that this revolution that's happened, um, for some of you it may seem a year old, some of you may think it happened three years ago, four years ago, I'll give you a little perspective on just how far we've come. What used to be the place you got the performance for your computation was traditionally from large computer manufacturers that made custom operating systems, custom systems, often their own processors as well. It gave you the performance that was unavailable anywhere else, however it came at a price. It came at a, a cost of the system itself. And also the fact that there were very limited numbers of them. Back in the 70s and 80s, you'd hear of someone who had a Cray supercomputer. Or you might know someone who was able to get access to that Cray supercomputer. But you didn't know many people who did. And then these computers came out, and you heard of other people coming up and saying, hey, I have access to that, that computer, but there was other challenges with that. It had a unique operating system, or it had access that was shared between 10 and 20 people. So when you programmed it, you didn't really have the computer at your command all the time. And fundamentally, it wasn't obeying the economic laws that make something pervasive. They were unique from each manufacturer. What happened a couple years ago, back in 1994, was this. Beowulf. Beowulf came out of uh, a couple engineers' minds. And what it was was how do you build a virtual supercomputer out of commodity PCs? Nobody believed it was useful in the beginning. It was a bunch of computers networked together, missing a lot of software in the beginning. One of those engineers was Donald Becker. He was the co-founder of, of Beowulf. And what he did is he started realizing what software had to be added to make this to be useful. So they used Linux in the beginning, actually. It, back then, Linux did not have device drivers for networking. So he wrote 50 device drivers to allow these systems to communicate. And then he wrote with his co other co-founder basically a manual for other people on how to build this. And the guide was simple. Find a simple PC, get 10, get 20, get 30 of them, take this software. They use software such as PVM, and then later MPI, message passing, so the systems can communicate. And this allowed virtually anyone to go and build a system and have access to that computing power. It took a couple years, but when you got into the year 2000, it was pretty common. These were clusters, what we commonly think of clusters. And now our, our partners like HP and, and Dell have taken these, and now they're 1U. But fundamentally, it's the same architecture as what was here. There's faster processors, there's faster memory. You can run Windows or Linux. But the, the, the thought process was the same. Most people in the beginning missed this transition point. In the beginning, they said, well, that will never be fast enough. Well, that will, you know, will it really take off? Because I've got a huge supercomputer over here called Cray. Right? That's so small. How could that ever be faster? Well, that's what we do in this industry is we, just, we figure out how to make things faster. But we do it through a kind of scale that keeps the price so low. And that's, that's the critical part. We take commercial technology and figure out how to not just ship 10, not ship 50. We have well over 250 million GPUs that can run CUDA today out there. So if you had your own Cray computer, you probably don't know anyone who ever had a Cray laptop. Well, if you have a laptop, you may have an NVIDIA CUDA GPU in it. Well, mine is, but I work for NVIDIA, so hopefully you have one. But now you have access to the same way you program on your system, you program on your laptop, and then it scales up. Now there's one very, very important thing I want people to understand, is GPU computing 
is not CPU versus GPU. It's CPU and the power of the GPU as accelerator. And that's where the cluster computer, the Beowulf technology, that embraces that same thought of using all the resources you have today and then taking new technology and making it faster. And this is very, very important to understand. That this is the foundation of our, our vision of how high-performance computing works. It's CPU plus GPU. There's always a CPU there, and we think there always should be a GPU there. GPU computing at, at its most basic view from NVIDIA is you already have software. And that software today runs primarily on the CPU, taking advantage of one, maybe two, maybe four cores. The simple idea from NVIDIA was how do you take the piece of software that the majority of your computational cycles are being used for and move that to the GPU to accelerate. And as you move that over to the GPU, you keep the rest of your system, the CPU, running the software. You're not taking the entire application, you're just taking the important pieces that are computationally bound that can be parallelized. Now many of you have started off by taking your current software and porting over, and that's a good way to learn. I would also recommend, however, that you look at other algorithms and other ways to take advantage of the GPU. Because remember, the person who wrote this code might have been thinking 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they have one CPU and one core. So there are other ways to think of how do I take advantage of parallelism. In parallelism, now you have multiple CPU cores and hundreds, if not thousands, of GPU cores. That is the future of computing now. 